Howdy, it's Kyle with part two of Strange and Interesting U.S. Counties. With most counties in the country doing kind of the same type of thing, the same type of jurisdictional control, generally the same type of size and scope, there are certain ones that do things a little bit differently based on their physical geography, and that's what this series is. I'll leave a link in the description and one of those little blurbs up there to part one if you want to check those out, but let's take a look at part two of Strange and Interesting Counties in the U.S. I'm going to start with Lake of the Woods County, Minnesota. This is the northernmost county in the country and the northernmost county equivalent in the contiguous U.S. The county has about 3,900 people, with the county seat being Bedette with about 1,000 people. And it's the only county in the country whose name is something X of the Y. So it's Lake of the Woods County and it takes its name from Lake of the Woods, which is that big lake there. Lake of the Woods is the largest lake in the U.S. after the five Great Lakes, and it's the 36th largest lake in the world. However, only parts of it are in the U.S., other parts are in Canada. But what makes this county really interesting is that it's home to the Northwest Angle. This is a portion of U.S. land that is discontiguous from the rest of the U.S. by land. And many people know about this, how you would have to drive through portions of Manitoba, Canada to get from the main part of Minnesota to the Northwest Angle. But one thing that's less known is that the Northwest Angle is not discontiguous from the U.S. It's contiguous by water, so you can take a boat from the North Shore of Minnesota to the Northwest Angle and not leave the U.S. And then during the winter, when the lake freezes over, there is an ice road, so you can drive from the North Shore of Minnesota to the Northwest Angle. Most of the land of the Northwest Angle is part of the Red Lake Band of the Chippewa Nation. And the total number of people living in the Northwest Angle is about 150. So Lake of the Woods County, the only county named X of the Y something, home to the largest lake outside of the Great Lakes, and you got this weird northwest angle part that's discontiguous. Pretty interesting things for one county. Next, I want to move on to Cimarron County, Oklahoma. This is the westernmost county in the state. It's the west end of the Panhandle, and with a population of 2,200 people, it's the least populous county in the state. The largest town and county seat is Boise City. It looks like Boise, but it's pronounced Boise. And it's also home to Black Mesa, which is the highest point in the state at just under 5,000 feet and just over 1,500 meters. And what makes Cimarron stand out is that it's the only county in the country that borders counties in four other states. It sits on the state lines with Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, and Kansas. And even though the entire state of Oklahoma is on central time, there's one town in this county, Kenton, that runs on mountain time. So, Cimarron County, nice place, sitting there at the western end of the Panhandle. Next, I'm going to move down to Monroe County, Florida. And whereas Lake of the Woods County, Minnesota is the northernmost county in the contiguous U.S., Monroe County is the southernmost county in the contiguous U.S. It has a population of about 83,000 people, and the largest town is Key West, with about 27,000. And the reason why this is such an interesting county is its huge dichotomy. Because this county consists of both most of the Florida Keys as well as a big chunk of Everglades National Park and Big Cypress Swamp National Preserve. Essentially, the entire population of 83,000 lives on one of the Keys, and 87% of the county land is uninhabited. It's either the protected Everglades or Big Cypress Swamp. I find it very interesting that Monroe County is essentially the entire chain of the Keys, but Miami-Dade County goes pretty far west into the Everglades. It gives the county a very strange look when you're looking at just the shape of the county itself. After Key West, the most populous islands are Key Largo, which is the largest one with about 14,000 people, Marathon Key with about 10,000, and Isla Morada with about 7,000 people. At the south end of the Keys is Dry Tortugas National Park. It's accessible by boat or seaplane only, and it's home to the unfinished Fort Jefferson. And from a geography standpoint, this is the southern and westernmost keys in the Florida Key chain. So you have a large number of near tropical islands, a big giant wilderness swamp, an unfinished fort, and a bunch of hurricanes, all with Monroe County. Next is Northampton County, Virginia. This has about 12,000 people. The county seat is Eastville, and the largest town is Cape Charles. And this is along the eastern shore of Virginia. This is the southernmost part of the Delmarva Peninsula. And Delmarva refers to that peninsula that's partially Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia. And this part is the Va of Delmarva. There are two counties in the Virginia eastern shore with the one just north of Northampton being Accomack County. 
I've always found it interesting that this is part of Virginia and not Maryland, but either way, this is a very lightly populated rural area. You might think that being right there on the beach would be a huge draw for development and housing, but this part of both the Atlantic side and the Chesapeake side are pretty swampy, so perhaps not the best for beaches or tourism, but better for keeping it nice and quiet around there. Northampton County is also the northern terminus of the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. This was completed in 1964, and prior to that, it was only a ferry service to get from the eastern shore of Virginia down to Virginia Beach. And because it's not part of Maryland, it was effectively an island to Virginia. And because there was so much development separate from the main part of Virginia, the accents in this part are also different. And that drive up the eastern shore of Virginia is really nice. You see a part of the state you don't normally think about when you think of Virginia. Going farther up the Atlantic coast, I'm going to Norfolk County, Massachusetts. This is west southwest suburbs of Boston with a population of about 725,000. And this is a discontiguous county. Between portions of this county, there are portions of Suffolk County, which is where Boston is. Originally, all of Norfolk County was contiguous, but then Boston and Suffolk County began annexing parts of Norfolk County. And then after all the annexing of Boston and Suffolk County, the towns of Brookline and Cohasset were exclaves to Norfolk County. And each of these suburbs is a separate exclave, so Norfolk County, Massachusetts is the only county that has multiple exclaves but over land, if not by islands and water. And for Massachusetts, that often doesn't matter what county you're in. There are technically 14 counties in the state. However, eight of them are used only for census purposes and population count. But Norfolk County is one of the six that does still act with a county government. So you can commit a crime in Brookline and have to deal with a Norfolk County DA. Heading out to near the west coast, I'm going to Inyo County, California. This is located on the eastern side of the Sierra Nevada going over to the Nevada state line. There are about 19,000 people in the county with the largest towns being Bishop, Lone Pine, Big Pine, and the county seat, Independence. This is the ninth largest county in the U.S. in terms of area, and there are several aspects of its physical geography that really make it stand out. One, it's home to Mount Whitney, which is the highest mountain in the contiguous U.S. It stands at about 14,500 feet or over 4,400 meters. But Inyo County is also home to Death Valley National Park, and within that is Badwater Basin, which at 282 feet below sea level is the lowest point in North America. So you have the highest point in the U.S. at Mount Whitney and the lowest point at Badwater Basin only 90 miles or 140 kilometers apart. Also, there are 12 peaks in California that are over 14,000 feet and Inyo County is home to 10 of them. But that's not all. Inyo County is also home to perhaps the oldest tree in the world. A Great Basin bristlecone pine named Methuselah is thought to be over 4,800 years old. There are some other trees thought to be about the same age, but whether or not this was the actual oldest one is certainly one of the five oldest trees in the world. And within Death Valley National Park, which is within Inyo County, is the highest recorded temperature ever on Earth. A temperature of 134 degrees or 57 degrees Celsius has been recorded at the park. The average high in July for this area is 117 degrees or 47 degrees Celsius. That's an average July day. So the highest peak in the contiguous U.S., the lowest point in North America, the oldest tree in the world, and the highest ever recorded temperature on Earth, all in Inyo County. Heading over to the Mississippi River, I'm going to Fulton County, Kentucky. It has a population of about 6,000 people with just over 2,000 each in Hickman and Fulton, the two largest towns, and it's located in an area right around the Kentucky bend of the Mississippi River. This is the southwesternmost county in the state. It borders both Missouri and Tennessee. And this is another county that has an exclave. But this one's a little bit different. You can get there by road, but only through Tennessee. If you go by crossing the Mississippi River, you go into Missouri and you cross the river again to get back into Kentucky. And the result is that I believe Fulton County, Kentucky is the only one in the country where you have to leave the state to access another part of the county. But perhaps the best part about the Kentucky Bend, this area that's been cut off, is that the population right now is nine. So buy up some land and be the tenth person to live in this exclave of Fulton County, Kentucky. Going back up to New England, I'm going to Grand Isle County, Vermont. The county has about 7,300 people and is the smallest county in area for Vermont. 
and this county consists of a series of islands as well as a functional island in Lake Champlain. So the main islands are called North and South Hero Islands, plus there are many other smaller ones. And overall, the vast majority of the islands in Lake Champlain are part of Vermont and not New York. Because the border between Vermont and Quebec, Canada was determined to be a line of latitude, it cuts off a part of this county known as the Alberg Tongue. Because this peninsula is jutting down and the largest town on it is Alberg, this is known as the Alberg Tongue. And even though this isn't an island, because there is no road access to other parts of Vermont without going through Canada, it's jurisdictionally an island. Next, I'm going to go down the Atlantic coast to Dare County, North Carolina. It has a population of about 38,000 people and consists of some swampland on the mainland as well as the Outer Banks. And the Outer Banks are a line of narrow barrier islands offshore, with the most well-known islands being Hatteras, Pea, and Bodie. But because these are low-lying flat islands with a lot of wind, the Wright brothers chose this area for their base of operations to test early airplanes. And where they did this is called Kill Devil Hills. It's a town now, but at that time there was nothing there. But on the mainland, you also have Alligator National Wildlife Refuge. And this is a swampy wetland area at the mouth of the Alligator River as it dumps into the Intracoastal Waterway. So in many ways, it's like Monroe County, Florida, where you have a mainland park that's mostly swampy wetland protected area and then most of the people living on islands. And if you're a paramedic in one of these counties, you might be responding to a shark attack one minute and then an alligator attack the next. So, Dare County, another one that has a dichotomous aspect of the county where the sheriff and the DAs have to deal with two very different things, even though the overall county really isn't that big. And lastly, I want to mention something I mentioned in other videos, but if I'm going to be doing a video talking about strange counties, I certainly have to mention these. And that is that the city of New York is actually divided up into five counties. Under New York City are the five boroughs, which is each its own county. Manhattan is New York County, Bronx is Bronx County, Queens is Queens County, Brooklyn is Kings County, and Staten Island is Richmond County. So in case you've ever wondered why it's Queens, well, Brooklyn is actually Kings County, so it would be Kings and Queens. So New York City is the only one in the country where the city jurisdiction supersedes the county jurisdiction. A guy from Queens commits a crime in Brooklyn, then gets caught in Manhattan. Which DA gets the case? I'm not sure how it all goes down, but New York City's county situation certainly makes it interesting. So that was part two of Strange Counties in the U.S. And I'll come back to this topic every now and then. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve. And subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about geography from a nerd. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out. I'd like to give a special thanks to my superior patrons for their support, especially Dominique. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can check out my Patreon page, and the link is in the description. As always, thank you very much.